Hello everyone! Today we will talk about a curious case involving the so-called phenylketonuria, a genetic disease also famous for its abbreviation PKU. PKU is a rare genetic condition in which the process of protein breakdown in foods is compromised. As we know, proteins are made of specific building blocks called amino acids. When we talk about PKU, there is a type of amino acids that the human body cannot break down or metabolize, and this is phenylalanine. Because of this reason, phenylalanine is built up in the tissues and blood. Such build up can affect seriously humans' brain and its proper functioning. Let's look at the disorder from a genetic point of view. Phenylketonuria usually happens to infants who inherit faulty copies of the PQ gene. As we all know, each gene sends a specific message that controls the cells and navigates them how to create a certain product. The PQ gene is responsible for telling the cell to make an enzyme that can break down phenylalanine. Faults in the genes or mutations cause problems in the body because the correct message is not sent which leads to the dangerous amino acid buildup. Now let me introduce you to the case with the Johnson's infant. When it was born, it seemed to be absolutely normal. However, a couple of days later, when last blood tests were made to the baby, the doctor called both the two parents and told them that their child might have the genetic disease, but more tests were needed to confirm the baby's situation. Eventually, if the doctors confirmed that the child had PKU, the parents should be aware of the symptoms which depend on the, what the form of the disease is. The forms of PKU vary from comparatively mild to severe, as the most severe one is classic PKU. Babies who have classic PKU often appear normal during the first months of their lives. However, if the infant is not treated for PKU at this period of time, it will begin to develop symptoms such as seizures, tremors, dermatological conditions like eczema, for instance, or an unpleasant odor of their skin, breath, or even urine. There is also a comparatively less severe form of the disorder, as it is called variant PKU. It appears when the baby has too large amount of phenylalanine in its body. In this case, it could have mild symptoms only, but it would be better for it to follow a special diet in order to prevent intellectual disabilities. If a new catenuria is not diagnosed when the baby is born, and it is not treated, the disease may lead to intellectual disabilities and brain damage during the first few months of its life and behavioral problems and seizures when the child grows up. The diet that people with PKU should follow must limit all kinds of food that contain phenylalanine. Especially for infants, they should not be fed with breast milk, but they could consume a special and essential for their organism formula. When the baby is old enough to eat solid foods, it will have to avoid those that are high in protein like cheese, fish, milk, and products such as eggs, beef, pork, etc. PKU meal plans are different for each person. People having the disorder should often visit the doctor or dietitian who will observe the costing process of how phenylalanine levels change. If we talk about medication, the so-called saproptyrene is the best option approved for the treatment of PKU. Saproptyrene's purpose is to make phenylalanine levels lower. This medication has to be combined with the PKU diet plan a person follows. However, even though this treatment might not always be helpful, it is most helpful for children with mild cases of the disease. Once a specific diet and other necessary treatments are started, symptoms gradually start to disappear. In conclusion, the good news is that there is already a safe infant screening test available, as it can detect whether the baby has PKU or not. However, I'm sure that there are a lot of questions that still remain without answers. Today's lesson will end with our two questions for the audience. First, do you believe that with the development of technology, there will be a strong medication that can be 100% helpful for everyone? 
end, according to you, what types of diets could be considered a good PKU meal plan? This was SCI Lessons with Chrissy. Thank you for watching. Live healthy.